Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tahlequah Church of the Nazarene. I greet you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter? I am thankful for this day, and my prayer is that God would give you joy and, and hope and the fullness of who He is where you are, we're th so thankful that you can join us today and so thankful that we can get together even over the internet, even over uh, from a distance uh, in these circumstances. God is bringing people together. And so my prayer for us today in anticipation uh, in a couple weeks, uh, we're uh, planning on getting back together in person. And I anticipate that that's going to be a time of celebration, a time of thanksgiving. But I really believe that even in this season and even in these weeks, God can give us joy in abundance and God can lead us closer to himself and closer to the mission that God has in store for us. It is on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter, that we emphasize the ascension of Christ. Christ was crucified. Christ died. Christ was resurrected on Easter Sunday. And after meeting with his disciples, after being with his followers for a period of time, he ascended to sit at the right hand of God the Father, the Almighty, to reign over heaven and earth as its Savior, as its Redeemer, as its Creator. So today we celebrate a special time in the, in the uh, church calendar, the, the final Sunday of the season of Easter, but also the Sunday that we emphasize that Christ ascended to heaven to be with the Father and is sending and has promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to direct us, to dwell in us, all of God dwelling in all of us. So today let's celebrate and let, let, let's uh, let the word of God sweep over us. I thought that today during our prayer time, uh, it might be better just to hear Jesus, our Lord and Savior, speak over us. In the 17th chapter of John, Jesus prays. He prays not only for his apostles who are there with him or his followers in that time, but uh, he prays for everyone who will come to believe through their witness. That includes you and me. So let's hear the words of Jesus as Jesus prays for us and with us today. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. And they have, received them, they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours. Yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name. 
that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. To the words of Jesus, we say, Amen. Lord, we thank you for your prayers for us. May we live into the, wor the words that Jesus has called us into. May we be one. May we believe in you. May we glorify your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'll turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 1 today. We're going to begin in chapter 1 with verse 6. You'll open that in however you access scripture this morning. Let me begin to read the scriptures today. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they, they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Thank you, Lord, for this word. May it take root deep in our hearts through faith and bear fruit for doing your will and righteousness for your name's sake. Amen. Coming together almost always leads to going out. In football, when the, the team huddles together, they don't stay huddled. They, they go out. They perform the play. They, they try, try again until they score. But every, in between every play, they huddle together so that they can go out. When we pile into the, to the van or to the car or to the bus, we plan on getting out at some point. We don't gather in there so that we can stay forever, but so that we can get out and go and do what we plan on doing at the end of the trip. Even when we gather together as families, we eat around tables, we, we huddle around televisions and around family rooms, and we talk with one another, we gather together so that we can live life out of the fruitfulness of what it means to be the fa a family, out of the life that is in that gathering. We go and we live our life. We go to school, we go to work, we go to the grocery store, we go out. And even in these days, when we gather together and we go about our daily routine, even though it's in closer distance, even, it, that, even though we don't go as far out from the house or go out of the house at all, we are still going and doing and living and not standing still. And we anticipate that at some point, even in this time of pause, we're going to get together again. And when we get together, it always leads to going out. And I think that's especially true of the church. It's especially true of God's people, of God's family, of God's followers, that every time we get together, we don't plan on just getting together for the sake of getting together. Getting together always leads to going out, always leads to the outward movement of, God, of God's people, to go and to do and to live 
and to worship not in a huddle, but in the real world of life, to be a witness, to bear witness to Christ. When the disciples had gotten together, that's how this uh, scripture um, starts, is they had all gathered together. They had all gotten together and they started to hear from Jesus uh, as, as Jesus would do in these days that he is meeting with his disciples and, and reconvening with them after the resurrection. They're listening to Jesus and walking with Jesus. And when they had all gathered together, they asked him the question that was burning in their hearts. Lord, is this it? Is this the time when the promise that, that, uh, that you have have uh, proclaimed to us that the kingdom of God has come and that the, the kingdom will be restored to Israel, that the kingdom of Israel itself will be restored. Is this the moment? Is this the crowning achievement? Is this where we're headed? And Jesus says, it's not for you to know what time or date the Father has set by his own authority. You see, Jesus points out that the, the apostles, in their, anxio in their anxiousness and in their waiting and in their anticipation, are putting too much focus on what hasn't happened yet. They're standing there in front of their resurrected Lord and asking him, Has this, or is this the moment? As if they can't trust that when the moment happens, they'll know. They've seen amazing things. They've, they've walked uh, through amazing moments with Jesus, and yet they still want to ask and still are worried, is this, can we know, is this the moment? And I know that you and I have some anxious questions. We want to know, is this the moment? Is this the moment where everything changes? Are we ever going to get back to a sense of normalcy again? Is this the moment that we get to go back to church or back to school or back to work or back to normal? Is this the moment? Is this the moment we will go back or that we will uh, hearken back to and say everything changed from there on out? And what will change? And what's going to happen tomorrow, and the next month, and the next month? Lord, is this the time? What time is this exactly? And just as Jesus responds to the anxious question of his apostles in this scripture, let Jesus respond to your anxious questions. It is not for you to know the times and dates set by the Father by his own authority. In this scripture, Jesus is saying that, that God will make the kingdom happen when God makes the kingdom happen. It, if they're worried about the kingdom being restored, God's got that. They don't know when that's going to happen, but that's not for them to know. That's for God to know and for God to do. And the same goes for us. Now, I don't know what God has in store for all of this, what God's going to do or how God's going to bring good and righteousness and glory out of all of these things. But I do know that he will because Christ is risen. And because you and I, just as these apostles have encountered Jesus in, in a new way uh, after the resurrection, we, in this Easter season, encounter Christ, our risen Lord, and hear the same words of assurance. The Father has the destiny of creation in his hands. You see, the, the, uh, the good news about Jesus is that in Jesus and through Jesus, God has 
directed the destiny of the world towards renewal and right and good. And ultimately, that's where we're headed. That's where things will end up are in God. Things will end up in God just as they started in God. God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is A and Z. He is beginning and end. And we can trust him with our anxious questions. With our waiting and with our wondering, we can trust that the destiny of creation begins and ends with a righteous God who loves us and has, uh, has opened up the pathway to renewal for all people. How do I know? How do I know, you may be thinking, what, what gives me this reassurance? What can give us this reassurance? It's what happens after Jesus says this. While he is speaking to them, uh, he, he is taken up into heaven. He, is, he ascends into heaven to be at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. So is this the day where the kingdom will be restored to Israel? No. But God is going to do that. God is going to bring renewal to all of creation. How do we know? Jesus sits at his right hand. Jesus didn't uh, uh, die and then live only to die again. Jesus has given us life after life after death because he enters into life after life after death. He ascends into heaven to live eternally at the right hand of the Father, to, to reign over all of creation as he directs the path of, of creation towards renewal and righteousness, we can know that our anxious questions uh, rest assured in, in Christ. Our anxious hearts, our anxious souls, our uh, fill-in-the-blank kind of questions that we're not sure how or when or why or what the future holds, but we know that God holds the future because Jesus lives and reigns. Jesus is king. And so the ultimate destiny of creation begins and ends with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this leads us to our response. How do we respond to the good news that Christ reigns and that our, uh, that our anxious questions can be directed toward him? Well, it leads toward a response of prayer. Prayer in anticipation of what God is going to do. And here's what God is going to do. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When Christ ascended, just before Christ ascends into heaven, he tells his apostles, you can rest assured that this hope that you have in me is eternal. That this moment is, is anchored in an eternal future with God. But until that day, until God's timing, until God fully brings uh, the kingdom of God to earth as it is in heaven, the Holy Spirit will work among you and in you and through you and so, wait for him. Pray in anticipation for him. Jesus tells them in verse 5, or in verse 4 and 5, to go and wait for the promise of God to come to them for the Holy Spirit. What God promised through Jesus to um, 
to wait for the Holy Spirit to fill them and to give them power and to lead them uh, to be witnesses to the world for Jesus. Jesus assures them that their hope is secure because God reigns as king of creation. And so together we anticipate because Jesus is alive and because he reigns, we devote ourselves to prayer. And when we devote ourselves to prayer, uh, what we do is we acknowledge the supremacy of Christ over the world. And we anticipate God's movement, the movement of God's spirit among us. Think about the posture that some, sometimes you might see people pray in. It is in a bowing posture. It is with our head bowed down, our eyes closed, our hands folded, as if to receive something, as if we are anticipating something from someone more important and powerful above us. And that's what we do when we pray. It is not some static exercise. It's not some thought exercise. It is a submission of life toward the glory and purposes of God and a posture of anticipation. Because Jesus doesn't go and tell them just to wait for God's promises as if they'll never come as if the Holy Spirit's not on the way, as if nothing will ever happen, but the coming together that Jesus asks for of his apostles is in anticipation of how God is going to send them out, of how God is going to fill them with all of himself and send them to do his will in the world. You will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, where they're starting this prayer, where they're starting this coming together in Judea, in the area around that, in Samaria, that area where they avoided before. But now uh, God's mission is opened up for people that didn't belong before to belong. And so that mission carries on there too. And oh, wait, everyone else is included too in your mission at the ends of the earth. The sky is the limit. Over mountain and sea and field, you are going to be my witnesses, Jesus says to his apostles. And Jesus says to you that when the Holy Spirit moves, when we receive power from God to do God's will as God promised, and we can be assured that God answers God's promises, we are sent out. Out of this prayerful posture, we are sent to be God's witnesses. Because when our lives are devoted to God, he empowers us to live the, a faithful life by giving us of his spirit. By coming to dwell in us. Not in some church building but in the people of God, as the temple of God has come to dwell in the flesh through Jesus, just so has he come to dwell in all the church by the sending grace of God. Jesus has sent to us the Spirit that we might know fully the power of God at work in us, the faithfulness of God at work in us, the same spirit that was alive in Jesus and that drove Jesus and that empowered Jesus and that uh, witness bears witness to Jesus to this day can be alive in us and in our church and in our family and in our world to the ends of the earth. When we are devoted to God, when we take a posture, not of just one prayer, but an entire life on our knees before the Lord with arms wide open, he empowers us. And when we are empowered by the Spirit, we cannot stay still. 
I might be getting a little bit of ahead of myself because I, we're looking on at a Pentecost next Sunday, but Pentecost Sunday and Ascension Sunday are right next to each other because this is the message that Jesus brings because of what God has done in Jesus and because uh, or Jesus sits at the right hand of God, the Spirit of God has come to fill the church of God that it may go out and serve him throughout the entire world, bearing witness to King Jesus, bearing witness to the kingdom of God on its way, bearing witness to the good news that Christ is alive and that Christ reigns. When we are empowered by God's spirit, we go. We are sent. We cannot stay still. So I know many of us may be wondering, when are we going to get back together? I want to remind us, we are together. Even like this, God's spirit is what unites us, not brick and mortar. God's spirit is what empowers us, not a place. But God calls us to come together, to pray, to, to worship, to give glory, to be inspired, to be filled. We come together as a family, as God's family in worship. When it's required, we come together at a distance. And when we get the opportunity, we're going to come together in this very room. But be reminded today. Every time the church gets together, it always leads to going out. I don't know what church will look like on the other side of this. I don't know what life is going to look like on the other side of this. But I know a couple of things. I know that Jesus lives. And I know that God has anchored our destiny in the life of Jesus. And his life is eternal and assured and trustworthy. God's got this, no matter what happens. I also know that God's spirit is still at work. No matter where we go and no matter what we do, God is still working. And if we take the posture of prayer that God is asking us to take, and we as a church gather together, even at a distance, with our arms, with our hands held open, and our lives bowed toward the King of the universe. He is trustworthy and faithful to empower us to do what is right and good and loving and faithful by Him and by one another. I also know. Then no matter what, no matter if we are meeting at a distance or we're coming together, we are called to go out. Maybe we've done great at that. Maybe we haven't. But no matter what the past has told and no matter what the future holds, Christ has called us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth, to Tahlequah, to Oklahoma, to America, to the ends of the earth. God's got this. God's spirit is at work. And he will give, it, he will give the spirit to you to empower you to be faithful. And being faithful looks like being a witness and going out and living for God all the time. Let me pray for us. Lord, we thank you for the reassurance that we need. 
We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future in His hands. So we pray, God, that You would hold us in Your arms, that we would know and be fully assured that we can trust You with what lies ahead, and that You will steer the ship as we, Your faithful church, turn to You that we, whatever the future holds for our church and for our lives, for our families, for our jobs, for our careers, for our dreams and our hopes, let them be anchored in Jesus. Let them be directed toward your kingdom and let us live our life knowing that we can trust in that kingdom's future, in your life and in the faithfulness of Christ. Help us to take that posture of prayer and fill us with your Holy Spirit, we pray. Sanctify us wholly that we might look more and more like the body of Christ each day. And as you fill us, send us out. Send us out that we might be your witnesses to one another, and your witnesses to those who do not know you, to those for whom you long to have home, for the ends of the earth kinds of people, for the people that we might not ever love without the love of Jesus at work in us, for the, lo for the people that you love, which is everyone, Set our lives and hearts toward that mission. That all the world might be your family. That all the world might come together. That all the world might be sent out by Jesus. To live life in your name. And in your name we pray. Amen. Now receive this benediction as we go. Let the same mind be in you that it was in Jesus Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped and exploited, but emptied of himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name that in at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Go in his grace and peace today. God bless you.